All right, 3.4. So we're going to take a little detour from our uh, study of specific functions, invertible functions, and their inverses, and their derivatives, so on and so forth. And we're going to focus on some application of uh, exponential functions and logarithms uh, to what's known as exponential growth and decay type problems. And these are really common in the sciences and biology and chemistry and other places. And so I want to first off give you the general setup. So we're going to be working in a situation where y of t gives the amount of a quantity y at any time t. And so you think of y as sort of changing. May y, maybe y of t represents how many bacteria cells um, you have in a culture at any given time. And so it would typically be growing, right? Or maybe decaying if you're killing it off, whatever. So uh, the rate of change of y, we're going to assume in these problems that the rate of change of y with respect to time, so just y prime, the rate of change of y is proportional, that's our keyword, to its size y of t at any time t. And I want to focus for a minute on what that means. So it actually, the key word is proportional. What does it mean for two things to be proportional? Let me say it this way. So maybe I've got some quantity alpha here. I'll actually write it, some quantity alpha, some quantity beta. What does it mean for alpha to be proportional to beta? It means that alpha is a constant multiple of beta. There's a number k out there that you can multiply beta by to get alpha. And so we're saying that these are always proportional at any particular time t, and that proportion, uh, the, the, the constant k there is the same. So in other words, when you see this, the rate of change of y with respect to time is proportional to y of t at any time t. What that's really telling you is the rate of change, which is dy dt, is equal to some constant k times y of t. That's what that sentence means, the rate of change is proportional to y of t at any time t. And k here is a constant. Okay, so this is an example of what's known as a differential equation. You'll get to do some of this in Calc 2. Uh, there's a whole branch of mathematics that studies equations like this. It's an equation where you're actually asking not to solve for the variable x, but for the function, in this case y of t, that satisfies y prime equals k times y. And so we have the following result. The only solutions to the following differential equations, when the differential equation is the one above, y prime equals k times y of t, are the exponential functions. y of t equals, I'm going to write y naught, I'll tell you what y naught means in just a minute, uh, times e to the k t. y naught, what is that? Well. I want you to realize that y of 0 is going to be y naught, this constant e to the 0, which is just y naught. And so you should realize that somebody just decided that instead of writing y of 0 every time, whatever letter you put here, you could put a c for the constant, or alpha, or whatever you want. But whatever it is, that constant will always be equal to just plugging 0 in for time. And so that's what the notation means. The y subscript 0 actually is always the same as y of 0. And it's a constant. It's a, it's a number. Make sure that we realize that. By the way, I don't think I said this, but this, uh, this handout that I've got, you can get a blank copy of it on Teams. So if you look on there, you can grab a copy and then take notes with it. All right, so we want to go ahead and suppose now that uh, p of t, I'm going to switch notation, same, same general setup, the same, same kind of problem that we're doing. But I, I'm, I'm going to think of p of t is actually giving me the population size at any time t. And so then what does that mean? Well, it turns out that in this case, we're going to go ahead and assume that the population growth is proportional to the population size. And this is a really safe assumption in most settings, right? If you think about uh, maybe the number of rabbits, and we're not thinking about disease or predators in this basic model, we're just thinking about the number of rabbits. The more rabbits you have, the faster they grow. And so the point is that you know that uh, dp dt has to be k 
KP of T. And I want you to realize, I'll change colors here just to make this a little more visible. You can actually solve for K in this case, the constant K. You can think of it as P prime of T over P of T. That's this constant K. And so I want you to realize that K is equal to the growth rate, which is just P prime, right? The growth rate is this P prime divided by the population size. And this is this quantity K, right? This, this quantity, let's put an arrow. This quantity is called the relative growth rate. And so when K is negative, for example, then your population is actually decreasing. When K is positive, it's increasing. The larger K is, the faster it increases. But this tells you sort of the relative growth rate. It allows you to compare uh, different growth rates here. Okay, uh, so finally, if a population has a, a relative growth rate K, and the population at time zero is P naught, then by the theorem above, the expression for the population at time t is p of t equals p naught e to the kt. We're going to use this again and again and again. Okay, so let's check this. Oh, maybe I'll switch back to uh, black here. So let's check that this thing actually satisfies what we want. So let's realize that p prime of t, which for the record, that is just dp dt, right? So this is the derivative of this expression. So the constant p naught comes along for the ride. The derivative of e to the kt is just e to the kt again times k. And now you say, wait a minute, that is p of t. So this is exactly equal to p of t times k, or we typically write the k first, k p of t. And so the point is, right, you can see that dp dt is a constant k times p of t as claimed. So it does work. So I'm going to stop this video here. And in the following examples, I'm just going to work through them with you and show you how we can use this very basic calculus to solve problems. And you may have seen some of these kind of problems before uh, in, say, college algebra, depending depending on where you took it, but you probably didn't actually compute any, any derivatives before. So we're going to be able to mix a little bit of calculus and a lot of standard algebra with exponentials and logs and, and solve some really interesting time. I don't think I have a problem on here where we deal with the coronavirus, but for example, if you wanted to model uh, the spread of the coronavirus, one model that you could use would be these exponential functions, and perhaps we'll add one of those at the end.